Let's see, our next speaker is Mary Roberts from the Martin House. Frank Lloyd Wright's Martin House is a world-class architectural masterpiece built for Wright's significant patron and friend, Darwin D. Martin, in Buffalo, New York, 1903 to 1905. Nearing completion of a comprehensive, multi-year, $50 million restoration effort, the Martin House is widely viewed as a model of excellence in historic preservation and sustainable economic development. A National Historic Landmark and a New York State Historic Site, the six-story, the six-building, one, one-and-a-half-acre site serves as a linchpin for architectural tourism in a city of American architectural masterpieces. Mary Roberts, Executive Director of the Martin House, leads a dedicated board, staff, and 400 active volunteers in service to Wright's organic principles and the continuing dialogue on the importance of architecture and design in contemporary lives. Please help me welcome Mary. The rest of you are making me nervous now. Thank you to the Buffalo Architecture Foundation and to the APT for bringing their 50th anniversary conference to Western New York this evening, this year, and thank you all for being here tonight. I have the honor of serving as the Executive Director of Frank Lloyd Wright's Martin House, and I'm here to share with you in under six minutes why this place matters. Buffalo has world-class architecture with buildings by Wright, Sullivan, Richardson, Burnham, the Serenins, a park system designed by Frederick Law Olmsted, and other unique structures such as our grain mills. Chicago is the only other city that can boast a similar range, and I would argue that the quality of Buffalo's architecture challenges the quantity of Chicago's buildings. Arguably America's greatest architect, Wright was a visionary artist and a revolutionary force in the modern culture of the 20th century. Here in Buffalo, he found a singular patron in Darwin D. Martin who would become a lifelong friend and who would lead Wright to some of the most important commissions of his career. I'm ahead of it. <laughs> Wright's genius is marked by his vision to create a new form of American architecture that was based on the open landscape of the Midwest Prairie. Wright redefined traditional concepts of space by physically and spiritually connecting the built environment to the natural world. The Martin House complex, it consisted of the smaller Barton House built for Martin's sister and her husband, the magnificent main Martin House, a 15,000 square foot home, a spectacular glass roofed conservatory that was linked to the main house by a 100 foot long pergola, open air, as well as a carriage house with a chauffeur's apartment up above and a gardener's cottage in 1909. Wright controlled and designed every aspect of the estate's decorative elements. Nearly 400 art glass panels, extensive furnishings, both freestanding and built in, light fixtures, statuary, Japanese prints, a spectacular glass mosaic fireplace were all part of Wright's integrated design approach. But after a 30-year residency in the death of Darwin Martin, the Martin House stood empty for nearly two decades, and it was a symbol of neglect in a city that was also beset by hard times. In the early 1960s, the three support buildings, the pergola, the conservatory, and the carriage house were all demolished. And a few years later, even though there was a 20-unit, three-building apartment complex that was constructed in the backyard of the Martin House, we began to slowly reacquire, restore, and reassemble the entire original historic site, an improbable project to say the least. So now 25 years of restoration in under six minutes. Phase one, roof restoration. This was to replace and repair roofs and gutter systems. It was an investment of nearly $2 million in two years of work. And the roofs of the Martin House and the Barton House were restored just in time for another conference, the 1997 Frank Lloyd Wright Building Conservancy when they came to Buffalo. After that, we started phase two. It was undertaken in 2003, 2004, and it focused on extensive foundation and drainage work at the Martin House in particular, nearly three quarters of a million dollars. And it was necessary, but not very glamorous when you've got to raise the money. Phase three, which lasted from 2006, 2004 through 2006, saw a faithful reconstruction of the pergola, the conservatory, of the carriage house, using Wright's original drawings with a price tag of about $8 million. Recreating these structures was essential to reinterpreting Wright's design genius for integrating buildings and opening spaces one into another. 
After that, we took on phase four, 2007 and eight. This focused on the exterior shell, the restoration of the masonry and the mortar. It was nearly a $5 million project. We also removed things like a non-historic addition to the second floor of the building and repositioned an exterior wall on the front face that had been remodeled over time. Phase five, it was an $11 million scope of work lasting over five years. It updated all mechanical systems of the Martin House, creating a museum quality environment so that we could house the furnishings in there. This also saw the restoration of extensive, I mean extensive eight and a half miles of running wood trim woodwork, plaster, color washes, and a beautiful fireplace. Reopening just a few weeks ago, the Barton House was the focus of our restoration efforts over the past year. This building is one of Wright's most intact, pristine historic structures. And it's a perfect example of a middle class home, including Wright's signature art glass and some built in furnishings. This year, we are undertaking the full restoration of the landscape that Wright designed for what was nearly a one and a half acre site again using his original plans to recreate the multiple elements and the exterior rooms that he created for the estate. This is a $2 million project that will include, I just heard this number a few weeks ago, the planting of 8,000 flowers, plants, trees, and shrubs. Along the way, in 2009, our visitor center, the Great Batch Pavilion, designed by architect Toshiko Mori, is the result of a design competition opened. And we've also installed a contemporary museum store in the carriage house that opened in 2007. But why does all this matter? As much as this project is about historic preservation, it's also about economic development. Jesse said something earlier that I love. This is a smart growth investment that we've made in the Martin House. It's world-class architecture, and it is widely viewed as the linchpin of a burgeoning regional cultural tourism industry. It'll pay for itself. So in closing, you have to see it to believe it. For those of you that are out of town, please do visit, see what all the excitement is about. Thank you again for your time and attention, and cheers to the Buffalo Architecture Foundation and to the Association for Preservation Technology.